வெல்கம் டு சங்கர் ஏஎஸ் அகாடமிஸ் டெய்லி நியூஸ் பேப்பர் அனாலிசிஸ் டுவெல்த் அக்டோபர் டுவெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி அனௌன்ஸ்மெண்ட் சங்கர் ஐஎஸ் அகாடமி ப்ரீ ஸ்டாமிங் யூபிஎஸ்சி பிரிலிம்ஸ் டெஸ்ட் சீரீஸ் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி அக்டோபர் டுவெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி திஸ் கோர்ஸ் கிளிக் த லிங்க் கிவன் பிலோ இன் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் Let's get into the today's topic of discussion. Today's articles are taken from two different newspapers. They are the Hindu and Indian Express. First article is about AI generated medical images. This article is from the Hindu newspaper. Second article is from Indian Express that focuses on 19th East Asia Summit. Prime Minister of India said should focus on development not expansion. Third article is taken from Indian Express that is about Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Government approved to amend civil services rules 2010 without any delay let's get into the articles the first topic of discussion is 19th East Asia summit the article discusses about prime minister of india's speech at the 19th East Asia summit in lao he emphasized that global issue particularly regional conflict should be resolved through dialogue and development rather than expansionism or military solution he focused on the importance of peace stability and the rule based indo pacific region he also highlighted maritime security condemning aggressive action in the south china sea now let's get into the article why this east asia summit is important from prelims point of view east asia summit is a premier forum for dialogue on cooperation on key strategic political and economic issues in the asia pacific region it was established in 2005 it includes 18 member states they are 10 asean members burundi cambodia indonesia laos malaysia myanmar philippines singapore thailand and vietnam six regional partners they are china japan south korea india australia and new zealand and another two countries us and russia got membership in 2011 the summit provides a platform for this countries to discuss regional security economic integration and maritime cooperation it plays a crucial role in promoting peace stability prosperity across the indo pacific region now let's move into the relevance of east asia summit it focuses on regional stability and security fosters dialogue on crucial geopolitical issues economic cooperation it provides a platform to promote trade investment and economic partnership strategic dialogue it is a venue for addressing global challenges such as climate change military coexistence and bilateral and multilateral trade activities major power engagement it promotes balanced power dynamics in asia let's see this topics in detail regional stability and security it is a dialogue on critical geopolitical issue including security terrestrial disputes and maritime safety in the indo pacific region economic cooperation it provides a platform to promote trade investment and economic partnerships among its members and also it strengthens regional economic integration strategic dialogue it serves as a venue for addressing global challenges like as i discussed earlier climate change counter terrorism and health crisis major power engagement by including countries like the usa china india and russia will promote balanced power dynamics in asia with this information let's discuss the importance of east asia summit to india it engages in dis- discussion on maintaining a free open and rule based indo pacific region strengthening economic ties diplomatic influence india can project its leadership on global issue it enables india to collaborate on regional security initiatives with this information let's solve the prelims practice question which of the following nation is not a member of east asia summit a vietnam b north korea c cambodia and d brunei answer is b north korea other three countries are members of east asia summit other than north korea with this let's see the second article the second topic of discussion is ai generated medical images This article discusses the potential and challenges of AI generated medical images. It highlights that traditional medical images such as MRI or CT scan are expensive and time consuming with privacy concerns when sharing patient's data. 
Now, AI generated medical images can help to overcome this issues by creating synthetic images. Before getting into the article, let us know the crux of artificial intelligence. Nowadays, AI played significant role in all the sectors such as healthcare, finance, robotics, transportation and entertainment and it has the potential to revolutionize many aspects of everyday life. Let us discuss about what is AI and advantages and disadvantages of AI. Artificial intelligence refers to the simulation of human intelligence by machine, especially computer systems to perform tasks that typically require human cognition. AI systems are designed to mimic human capabilities like learning, reasoning, problem solving, understanding language and perceiving the environment. Its goal is to create machines that can think and learn in way similar to humans often improving in performance through experience. There are two streams of AI. They are narrow and general AI. Narrow AI is designed for specific tasks. For example, voice assistants like Siri or Alexa, facial recognition systems and recommendation algorithms. Otherwise, general AI aims to have a machine that can perform any intellectual task a human can do. In this AI technology include machine learning, a subset of AI whereas machine learn from data to improve performance without being explicitly programmed. Another one is deep learning, a further subset of machine learning using neural networks to analyze data especially for tasks like image and speech recognition, natural language processing. It allows machine to understand and interact with human language. With this information, let us get into the article which speaks about AI generated medical images and its advantages and challenges faced in medical field. As I discussed, as we discussed earlier, AI generated medical images can help to overcome this issue by creating synthetic images. What are synth synthetic medical images? These are artificially generated images not derived from real world medical data. It was created using artificial intelligence algorithm. This was created using artificial intelligent algorithm without using actual patient data. That is synthetic medical images generated by artificial intelligence can help to overcome the shortage of real world medical scans like MRI and CT scan. Uh, another one is overcome the shortage of real world medical scans. Artificial intelligent models can create these images without using actual patient's data. It ensures the safety of patient's real time data. After this we have to know about AI model used in medical imaging. There are three models of medical imaging models in artificial intelligence. They are generative adversarial networks, diffusion model and the another one is variational autoencoders. With this, let us move into the advantages of medical imaging. With this, let us move into the advantages of medical imaging. The advantages are cost effective and scalable, effective data use, filling gaps in data, intermodality translation. Let us discuss this in detail. Cost effective and scalable. Medical images from this from devices like MRI and CT scans are expensive and harder to obtain. Generating synthetic medical images is far cheaper and faster than acquiring real world images from MRI or CT scans. Let us move to ethical data use. Since artificial in intelligence generated images do not rely on actual patient data, privacy concern around data sharing in healthcare can be elevated. This is especially information for collaboration across institutions and research labs. Let us discuss about the filling gaps in data. AI generated images can be used to augment data sets which is particularly helpful when real medicine data is limited or unavailable. This supports training AI models in diagnosis medical conditions. Intermodality translation. AI can generate Images from different image modalities, example translating MRI data into CT scan or vice versa. Making it easy, this makes it easier to work across imaging types. With this, let us move on to the challenges of medical imaging. There are accuracy and reliability, loss of clinical expertise, bias in image creation, regulatory hurdles. Let us see this in detail. Accuracy and reliability. Synthetic images may lack subtle variations 
present in real medical data such as tissue density differences such as tissue density differences or specific lesion pattern. This could lead to diagnostic errors if models trained on synthetic data are used in real world settings. Loss of clinical expertise. As reliance on AI increases, there is concern that human clinicians may lose the renounced expertise gained from handling real medicine cases. This could degrade the quality of diagnosis over the time. Bias in image creation. AI generated images can sometimes carry biases from the data they were trained on. If these biases aren't addressed, they could lead to inaccuracy in diagnosis or treatment recommendations. Next one is regulatory hurdles. It is nearly regulatory hurdles. It is unclear how regulatory bodies will govern the use of AI generated images in clinical settings as they may not have the same standard for validation as real world medical images. To overcome this, AI and human expertise will work hand in hand. With this information, let's solve the prelims practice question. Which one of the following statement regarding AI generated medical image is or are correct? Statement 1. Reduction in the need for expensive and time consuming real world imaging. Second statement is enhanced privacy due to the absence of real patient data. Third statement is synthetic images are automatically more accurate than real patient data. From the above statements, select the correct answer using the code given below. Option A is 1 and 2 only. Option B is 2 only. Option C 1 and 3 only. Option D 1, 2, 1, 3. The answer is option A 1 and 2 only. Let us move on to the next article. Topic of discussion is about amendment of Jammu and Kashmir Civil Services Decentralization and Recruitment Rules 2010. After the newly elected Jammu and Kashmir government, Lieutenant Government of Jammu and Kashmir approved an amendment to the Jammu and Kashmir Civil Services Decentralization and Recruitment Rules 2010. Let's get into the article. Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir approved to amend the civil services rules regarding recruitment policies include recruitment of subordinate services particularly class 4 staff non-gazetted under the services selection board of Jammu and Kashmir. Let us move into the objectives of the amendment. Objectives of the amendment speaks about three E's. They are ensuring transparency and standardization, efforts to decentralize recruitment under the centralized mechanism and the another one is evolving administrative framework in Jammu and Kashmir post abrogation of article 370. This article 370 is very important from prelims point of view. What is article 370? Article 370 of the Indian constitution granted special autonomy to the Jammu and Kashmir which includes state can have its own constitution, laws and autonomy over all the matters except defense, foreign affairs and communication. Key provisions of this article is Jammu and Kashmir had its own law and residents enjoy dual citizenship. That is, residents of Jammu and Kashmir can access both Indian citizenship and Jammu and Kashmir citizenship. In Indian laws did not automatically apply to the Jammu and Kashmir without the approval of its government. Another one important provision is Article 35A, which speaks about the residential and property residents of Jammu and Kashmir. This plays the vital role in Jammu and Kashmir's residential and lawmaking power. But this article was revoked in 2019 by NDA government. After that, this Jammu and Kashmir state was divided into two union territories. One is Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory and Ladakh Union Territory. Both of this brings under the Indian law such as other states. That means special status given under the article 370 will not be followed by Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir also works under the Indian government that is union government such as other states of India. With this information, let us move into the Jammu and Kashmir Civil Services Decentralization and Recruitment Rules 2010 which speaks about the Jammu and Kashmir which was framed under the Jammu and Kashmir Civil Services Act. And also, this rules created Jammu and Kashmir Service Selection Board, which does not include class 4 staff, multitasking and non-gazetted positions under the Jammu and Kashmir Services Selection Board. Now, this amendment includes the class 4 staff 
under the Jammu and Kashmir Services Selection Board. That was the major decision approved by the Lieutenant Government of Jammu and Kashmir as of now. Further, we should know about the Jammu and Kashmir Civil Services Board and its functions and structure. It is an government body for recruiting subordinate roles of Jammu and Kashmir. This also issues notification for Services Selection Board of Jammu and Kashmir. Further, we have to know about the Jammu and Kashmir Services Selection Board's function. Functions of Jammu and Kashmir Services Selection Board was categorized into two divisions. They are Class 4 employees and non-gazetted employees. First, we are going to discuss about Class 4 employee. Class 4 employees are none other than lowest category of government workers encased in manual, unskilled and semi-skilled tasks. A educational require requirement is the candidate should pass 8th or 10th standard. Further, they are classified as Group D. Class 4 employees, further they are classified as Group D employees. They are recruited under Jammu and Kashmir Services Selection Board. In the aspect of promotion opportunities, they are limited with the promotion opportunities because of their lower rank positions. Examples of class 4 employees are peon, sweeper, gardeners, watchman, multitasking staff, drivers. In this, some of the positions need technical knowledge such as multitasking staff and driver. For example, driver should have driving license and proper driving experience to become driver under class 4 employees. Now, let us know about the non-gazetted employees. Non-gazetted employees are none other than employees with roles not published in government gazette worked under gazetted offices. Their roles are not gazetted in the government document, but their work is under the gazetted offices. Their required educational qualifications are high school diploma, bachelor's degree, or specialized technical training. After that, they are classified under Group B and Group C offices. That includes non-gazetted mid-level roles and clerical and technical roles. They are recruited under Staff Selection Commission, that is SSC, and Jammu and Kashmir State Public Services Commissions. In the promotional aspect, they had the wider range of scope because they are comes under clerical and technical posts. Example of non-gazetted employees are clerks, junior engineers, assistants, teachers, sub-inspectors, constables, section officer, lower division clerks, upper division clerks and technicians. These are all related to technical works. The one who has technical knowledge should be selected for this non-gazetted employees. With this information, we can conclude that Jammu and Kashmir Civil Services Rules 2010 was amended with, uh, with the inclusion of Class 4 employees and non-gazetted employees into the Civil Services Rules 2010, which states that Class 4 employees and non-gazetted employees both are recruited under Jammu and Kashmir Services Selection Board. Let us see the prelims practice question in this regard. In the context of Jammu and Kashmir Civil Services Rules, what does the term brawn on the establishment refer to? Options are, option A is employees hired on the contractual basis. Option B, position formally recognized within the official structure of an organization. Temporary employees not entitled to government benefits. Positions that are not recognized by government. The answer is, position formally recognized within the official structure of an organization. In the conclusion, if you like this video, share it to your friends, give your valuable comments. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you for listening.